I'm going to show you the coolest way to solve this Sudoku by giving you the secret to spotting continuous loops. Plus, I'll give you the other advanced strategy you need to solve the green cell. Click below if you want to give this puzzle a go. With that, it's solving time. Look up here in block two, you got this one and this one. I'm going to do possibilities for one up here, so we'll mark that. It's called Snyder Notation, anytime a three by three block. You only have two possibilities for can, you can mark it. If you solve one, we can solve the other cell right away. If you look here in block five, how this one cuts across, and this one comes up. Two possibilities for one right here. So this is called a pointing pair. The difference is, since the ones are in the same row, and they have to be somewhere here in block five, it can only be anywhere else along the row outside of that block. If you try to put a one over here, there's no place to put a one in block five. So these can't be ones, and these can't be ones because of this one. So we have two possibilities for a one in block four. And then down in block nine, you have a one here. You got these two ones. We'll do Snyder ones in block nine. All right, let's move on to the fours. You'll see that you have these two fours here, and you have this four. So we can solve for four in block. Seven. And look on the fives. Got some restrictions going on here. So with these two fives now, only two possibilities for a five in block seven. And then let's look at the sixes. These two sixes. Got Snyder sixes in block eight. And the sevens. We can actually solve for seven in block eight because you have these two sevens. And you have this seven right here. Only possibility left is right there. And with these two sevens and this seven now, we have Snyder sevens in block two. And then we have in block three, this seven and this seven cutting across, you end up with a pointing pair of sevens. So they come straight down column eight. And with this seven, there's only two possibilities left for seven in block six now. And then you look over here in block four, there's only two possibilities for a seven there. Greetings, friend. If you are new to the channel, I welcome you to Smart Hobbies. Subscribe, tap the bell for notifications. If you want to turn your passing interest in Sudoku into a fun and enjoyable hobby. Okay, we're on the hunt for this continuous loop. You don't know what that is? I'm going to show you. But we got to continue with our Snyder and see how much and how many restrictions and easy solves we can find. Got these eights. Got an eight here and an eight here. Two possibilities for an eight in block seven. And then in block eight, only two possibilities right there. Look at the nines now. And block one, with this nine cutting all the way across and this nine coming up, you have a nines or a pointing pair. So they can't be in any of these three spots. So there's only two possibilities for the nine left in block four. We'll mark that. And then with this nine and this nine, we have another pointing pair of nines in block nine. So they can't be in any of these three spots. We can do Snyder nines right here. And what you'll notice is we can actually do a solve here. Because you wait and see is that the nines are restricted to rows four and six here in block four. And then they have to be restricted to rows four and six here in block five. And so whenever you see that situation, this is kind of like a mini X-wing in a way. We need the nines somewhere. Uh, they got to be in row five, right? So that's got to be so over only over here in block six. And we just noticed that the only place a nine can be in row five and block six is this cell. So this actually has to be your nine. There may be a way to solve more puzzles like this. Join the Smarty Party by clicking on the pinned comment and you can get my March puzzle pack with special guest creator Pietato. The puzzle and slaves pack, they're so fun. I get excited just thinking about them. You're gonna love them too. And you wanna solve fun puzzles, right? Okay, we've done all the Snyder marks that we can do in this puzzle and we still haven't gotten very far. So the next step, you need to look for single can strategies or you can start looking for restrictions with buy value cells. And for this puzzle, we are going to want to look more for the buy value cells. We're going to create this continuous loop. Look here, we have five digits filled in in row five. We have a three, four, six, seven, nine. We need a one, two, five, and eight. So this can be one, two, eight. This can be a one or two buy value cell, BBC, very good. This can be a two or five, and this can be a two, five, or an eight. Now look over here in row seven, okay? We only have four digits filled in, but we also have a lot of extra digits down here in rows eight and nine. That's why we wanna focus on row 
seven. So we have a two, four, six, seven. We need a one, three, five, eight, and nine. So right here, one, three, five, and an eight. Right here, you only need is a one and a three, because you have the five, eight, nine in the column. You have the one three right there, so this is a five, eight, nine. And then you got a one, eight, nine here, so this is a three, five, okay? And we have the eight there, so one, three, five, and a nine. All right, you wanna focus now on these four cells. And I'll color them in, let's do orange here to kind of show them out. All right, you wanna see these four cells. What do you notice? They're all bi-value cells, but they have a special relationship with them. And I want to remind you too, uh, there's going to be another advanced strategy after what I am showing you here. So you got to keep watching. After I show this, we're going to make a big step towards solving this puzzle, but we're not going to get all the way there. What you see in these four cells, so you have a one, two right here, and you have a two, five there, a three, five here, and a one, three here. So you have the four digits, one, two, three, and a five. And what you might notice is if that's a one, that's a three, that's a five, that's a two. Okay, no big deal. But if this is a two, then that's a five, that's a three, and that's a one. That's the only two possibilities. So either, you know, you're going to have the two here, here. You're going to have the five here, here, the three here, here, and the one here or here. This is a nice continuous loop. And it's a loop because it comes back on itself. Another way to talk about it will say, you know, this one has a strong with the two, weak to this two, strong to the five, weak to the five, strong to the three, weak to this three, strong to the one, weak to this one, strong to. So you keep going in circles. And by strong, we mean if one's false, if the one's false, the two has to be true. And then true means if the two is true, if it, it is a two, nothing else along this row can be a two. And so the other, it has to be false. All right. What this means to you, and what I showed you the two different ways, is that you can eliminate all the other ones along column three, right? And these can't be ones anymore because we just showed you a one has to be one of these two cells. We can eliminate all the other twos along row five. So we can get rid of those twos right there. We can eliminate all the other fives along column seven, and then you can eliminate all the other threes along row seven. Okay, how does this help us out? It's actually going to help us out down here in block nine. All right. So now realizing this cannot be a five anymore, what can this cell be? It can't be a one. It could be a two, but it can't be a three. It can't be a four. It can't be a five anymore. It could be a six, but it can't be a seven, eight, or a nine. Okay, cool. Look at this cell right here. What can this cell be? Yeah, it can't be a, a one or a two, it can't be a three, it can't be a four, it could be a five or a six, but it can't be a seven, eight, or a nine. Okay, so keeping that in mind here, we're gonna look for our other advanced strategy. Okay, let's remove the orange colors. And now I want you to focus on uh, this cell right here. Okay, you look right here, there's a two or six. Looking for three paired possibilities here. You notice you have a two, five right there, and you have a five, six right here. So, if this is a two, that'd be a five. If this is a six, that would be a five. And so, you have the three paired possibilities, two, five, two, six, five, six. One right here, this pivot sees the two pinchers, and what we realize is that no matter what this value is, you got a five one of these blue cells. So you can eliminate a five from any cell that sees both the blue cells. And what cell is that? You can actually eliminate a five from this cell up here, but you can also eliminate a five from right here, our green cell. This is awesome. This is called an X, Y wing. I actually cover both X, Y wings and continuous loops in this tutorial. This is awesome. Let me know in the comments if you found something different to get this green cell. Did you use XY wing? Did you use something? I bet you could use something like an XYZ wing might play. I even heard that people could use swordfish for this particular puzzle. Let me know in the comments. I would love to hear from you. So what we're going to do now is we can solve this cell for a 
three. Doesn't mean we're done though. We got plenty of solving left. There's plenty of digits to figure out in this puzzle. But we got our green cell. And what does that do for us? Well, with these two threes, we can put threes down right there. And then now we can figure out this whole continuous loop. You know, that's got to be the one, that's got to be the two, and that's got to be the five, which makes this cell an eight now, and this cell is going to be a one. I want to thank Chad for this wonderful puzzle. It's the first time you've been on Smart Hobbies. I don't think it's going to be the last. Now let's look up here in block three. You got these two eights and this eight. You can put an eight right there. And now let's look up here in row one and see what else we can do. We got these two fives. And so five has got to be in one of these spots, right? And then we can look in what can be in this cell. Well, it can't be a one or a two. It can't be a three. It could be a four, but it can't be a five, six, seven, eight, or nine. This actually has to be a four now. Nice. And then if you look over in this cell, you see here we only have three candidates left in block, excuse me, column three. So we need a three, four, and a six. Well, I got a four and a six right there. So that's got to be your three. I got my four right there. So this is going to be your four, and that's got to be your six. All right, look across row one. Can we keep solving this? We need a one, five, eight, and a nine because we have a two, three, four, six, seven. Well, I have a one right here, a five here, and an eight right there. So that's got to be your nine. Let's remove that Snyder mark. And so now we need one, five, eight. Well, I have a one, eight here. This has to be your five now. Okay. And then the one can only be here according to the marking. So that's got to be your eight. And now we can displace the Snyder mark and we can solve for one right here. This speeds up our solving so much by using that Snyder notation. And now at this eight, we know. We're going to displace the Snyder mark right there. We can solve this cell for the eight, displacing our Snyder six, which will displace this eight. And we can solve this cell for the eight, displacing our Snyder five, displacing our Snyder three. Awesome. And that's our three in the corner. Do, do, do. Okay, only digit left here. We got a full house. So we can solve this with certainty for a two, which is going to allow us to solve for the six and the five right there. And now with these two ones, we know we can solve for the one right here and we got the five. So this has to be your nine and that's going to be your five. Let's finish up block eight. I don't see a nine right there. And then I don't see a two in block nine. Awesome. And so now what can we go here? Looks like we need a two and a seven. So I'll put the two and the seven right there. Can't solve that just yet but it looks like here three or six i got my six there i'm going to pull it on over so i know this has to be the three that's got to be the six good job there and then with these two sixes and this six we can solve for a six in block one i'm going to kind of focus on the restrictions i don't see a one yet i got this one so that has to be the one that's got to be the two and it looks like we got all the ones taken care of now we can look here we're looking for like an eight or a nine it's all the eight or nine yet. And then right here, it looks like we need a seven or a three. Well, I got my three here. So that's got to be your three displacing that Snyder seven. Okay, now we can disambiguate the two seven in block six here. And then we just need a four and a six. Well, I just solved the four or excuse me, the six there. So that's got to be your six. And that's got to be your four. Awesome. All right, where do we go from here? We're looking for four set, oh, excuse, you know, we have the four, so we're looking for the three and the seven. So there's my three, displacing that Snyder seven. Great, we'll displace the seven here. Snyder seven, all for seven right there. We need a two and a five right there. Okay, I got my five. That's a five, that's two. Awesome, with these twos and this two, I'm gonna do a little cross hatching. That's the quickest way to get solves done. And I need a four and a nine here. I got my four here, so that's gotta be your four, and that's gotta be your nine, I got a full house in column four. So I know I can solve that for an eight with certainty. With this eight, that's an eight displacing that Snyder nine. All right, another full house going across the row six. So that's gotta be your four here. We have two digits left. I don't see a five or a nine. I'll pull my nine out from block two. So that's your nine and last digit is a five. See if you can spot the continuous loop in this next video. Thank you so much for watching.